So uh, it's absolutely true that the top Nazis were trying to get Hitler to escape by plane. Planes managed to escape from Berlin up to virtually the last second uh, before uh, the, uh, the, the Russians got to the Fuhrer bunker. So it's perfectly, that's perfectly possible. Also, there were at least two Nazi submarines landed on the coast of Argentina uh, in July 1945. That's been documented and proven. They've got photographs of them. Um, so it's possible that Hitler could have taken a submarine and landed in Argentina. It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Robert Hutchinson, and we're going to be discussing his brand new book, What Really Happened, The Death of Hitler. Robert, it is truly an honor, sir. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Well, and I realized this as I was getting my notes ready this morning. It is actually release day for the book. So congratulations. The book is real and out there now. Yes, it is. It's, I was excited myself. I couldn't believe it. It came really fast. <laughs> yeah, it's always, it's always funny. You know, um, people often don't think about it can sometimes be a two-year, even for some books, three, five-year or more journey before it will uh, actually come to life. And so there's an awful lot of work that has uh, happened before that book actually uh, gets out there onto the shelf. Uh, I'd love to ask you a little bit um, about your origin story. You know, this is the first time I'm meeting you, and I know you're going to be brand new to many of my viewers, many of my listeners. So let's start off with that. For those of us encountering you for the first time today, what are a few things we need to know about you? Uh, gee, gosh. Uh, well, I was born and raised in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, I studied uh, philosophy, of all things, uh, at, a, at Seattle University. And then I moved to Israel in my in my wild youth, I was quite the traveler when I was young, and I spent two years in Israel studying Hebrew, uh, and then I went to graduate school and got a degree in New Testament studies. Um, and so my early books were concentrating on their history of early Christianity and the historical Jesus and things like that. I wrote a couple of books about how <clears throat> what people have been telling us for a century about Jesus of Nazareth is now been utterly debunked even by skeptical mainstream scholars in, in big universities. Uh, so I've always been very, very interested in early Christianity and history. Uh, but then I started branching out and started doing other kinds of history. I kind of got, uh, um, wanted to write about something that wasn't 2,000 years old, but more recent. And so I pitched a series of books to uh, Regnery about, called the What Really Happened series, about taking important events that are somewhat controversial or unknown or or there are aspects of them that haven't been resolved and sorting out truth from fiction and trying to decide what really happened. And we uh, did two books this year. One was The Lincoln Assassination and the second one uh, was The Death of Hitler because although everybody thinks they know, knew, know what happened to Hitler, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about it. The, the History Channel just did a three-year reality TV series that was based on the idea that he may have escaped. This was in 2015 they started this. So some of these historical events have a mystery surrounding them, and this series tries to sort everything out for everybody. So it's been a lot of fun, and I've had a lot of fun doing that. And so I'm just sort of a, a full-time professional writer, um, raising my kids and, and writing about different uh, historical mysteries and traveling around the world when I can. And in terms of the What Really Happened series, The Death of Hitler is the second book. Do you have a, a vision for additional books in the series? Yes, depending on how well they do. We're, we plan on doing, uh, you know, a couple titles a year. Uh, I'm the general editor, so I will write some of them, and then we'll have other authors who will write um, different different titles. Uh, so, yeah, we plan to r cover the gamut from the sinking of the Titanic to whatever happened to Amelia Earhart. Uh, there's all sorts of historical mysteries out there that lend themselves to this title or to this series. Well, and, and I was thinking also as I was finishing my notes this morning, as somebody who thinks a lot about keywords and search terms for titles, I was like, man, this is brilliant. What really happened? The death of Hitler. Who wouldn't search for that in Google? And your book can rise up uh, right there to the top. 
Uh, in terms of this as a you know this topic, the death of Hitler, is this something you've always had an interest in, or did you solely go down this rabbit hole just for this project? Uh, no, I've always been interested in World War II, and I've always been interested in Germany. I began going to Germany. I discovered Germany late in life, uh, in my early 50s, actually. Uh, I was hired to speak uh, in Germany uh, for publishing executives to teach uh, writing for publishing executives. And so I was uh, uh, came to Germany uh, annually for quite a few years. And then I even went out and took a German course at a college, went back to school and studied German because I became fascinated by the country uh, and the people who are absolutely marvelous people, uh, very much like Americans in many regards. And so um, I became very interested in the history of that and World War II and how how an entire nation was bewitched by by one man and, and basically led to the greatest disaster in human history. Uh, so that whole history, I, 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 one of my favorite hotels uh, in Bonn is right on the Rhine. And I just love this it's an old hotel from the 19th century. And it turned out quite by coincidence, uh, it was Hitler's favorite hotel. He stayed there something like 38 times. So I've always had this kind of curiosity about Germany and World War II and what happened. And so when we were putting together this series, that was just one of the subjects I really wanted to do. Uh, and I did. I went back to Berlin. I went to all the sites that I talk about in my book. I went to the where the Fuhrer bunker is located in uh, in Berlin, where Hitler had uh, ultimately met his end and all that. So I, re, I revisited all those places. I tried to do that with every book. I did the same thing with Lincoln. I go to the actual places because you can learn a lot of things when you're actually on the spot and don't just do library research. Uh, for the people listening to or watching us right now, you know, if they're already familiar with a wide range of books on the life of Hitler, when they pick up your book, what's going to be different? How are you approaching his life and, and also his death uh, in a way that others haven't before? Uh, well, what I basically do is tell this, I do a lot of different things in this book. First of all, I, I tell the story of how the conspiracy theories arose. Why? Why do people continue to believe uh, that Hitler escaped and lived out the rest of his life in Argentina? Why did the History Channel continue to uh, uh, do a series in 2015 uh, about this? So I tell the history of the conspiracy, and then, and then because of really recent developments, as in 2018, I'm able to give the definitive answer about what really happened. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm the first person to do that. But I think this is the first book that really tells the story of what happened to Hitler in his final days, how the conspiracy theories arose, how people came to believe that he escaped, and then how we finally settled once and for all what really happened. I think this is the first book that does all of that. And I also tell the story about the 40 different assassination attempts against Hitler and why they failed, including Operation Valkyrie, which everybody knows about the, uh, the Stauffenberg. Uh, assassination attempt on July 20th. So um, there's a lot in this book. It's got a lot of maps and photographs and things like that, a lot of travel logs, you know, on the spot kind of reporting. Uh, so I try to make it uh, as fun as a book on this topic can be, um, or at least as, as informative and as easy to read as I can. Yeah, I mean, you for somebody picking this book up, they might expect it to be kind of dry, but uh, with the way it reads and then with all the kind of visual aids, if you will, the pictures, the maps, kind of the different things that are called out throughout the text. Uh, you can't help but just stay engaged. It, it's actually a, a really, really fast read, in my opinion. Uh, in terms of, say, the original official account of, of Hitler's death, uh, why did that leave so many people unsatisfied? What was it about that, kind of that original account that made people a little nervous or suspicious? Well, first of all, the only way we knew that it, whatever happened was because of uh, captured Nazis. Uh, people announced the death of Hitler solely on the basis of radio reports. Uh, they had no physical evidence at all. In fact, they had no physical evidence for uh, about 25 years. Uh, in other words, there was no body. Uh, when the, People don't realize that when the Western Allies finally entered Berlin uh, in July 1945, there was no body. No, nobody could produce a body. The Soviet Union, which invaded Berlin first, 
and was there for two months. They said, we didn't find a body of Hitler. Uh, we have no idea where he was or where he is. And he, we think he probably escaped. Joseph Stalin himself told the Western leaders that, in his opinion, Hitler escaped, probably, probably with the help of Western intelligence. Um, and so, as a result, 50% of Americans polled right after the war didn't believe the official story and thought that it was probable that Hitler did escape at the last minute and was living, uh, you know, uh, the high life somewhere with stolen Nazi gold and so on. And that wasn't a crazy opinion because there were a lot of facts and unusual things that had happened that, that led, lent credence to that. You know. And then in 1960, they found Adolf Eichmann, the Israelis captured Adolf Eichmann, and that showed that there were indeed top Nazis that managed to escape to Argentina and live a quiet life in Buenos Aires and other places. So over the years, this story has grown, and more and more pieces of evidence have given um, credence to the conspiracy theories. In, in uh, 2014, Barack Obama released formerly top-secret FBI and CIA documents that showed that the FBI had investigated reports of Hitler's a possible escape uh, for decades after the end of World War II. So that led to a flurry of headlines that said that um, uh, Hitler may have escaped. And then before that, in 2009, for the first time in 60, 70 years, the, the Russians allowed an outside expert to examine a skull fragment that they said belonged to Hitler. And the Western pathologist, based on DNA analysis and other tests, said it wasn't Hitler's. It couldn't have been Hitler's. It was, it was from a 40-year-old woman. So this led to headlines around the world saying, the history books may have gotten it wrong, and that uh, Hitler may not have died in the bunker after all. So there's been a lot of doubt sown about the official story, a uh, legitimate doubt. Um, and that's why I decided to do this book, is to set the story straight and say what actually really happened. Uh, it's well known that Hitler used body doubles throughout the war. Uh, is it possible that he may have had a body double in the bunker while he and Eva Braun escaped? Absolutely. And that's why part of this was fueled it. Uh, the the uh, Russians at first, uh, when they first invaded uh, Berlin, they, they found a, a body uh, that they were sure was Hitler's. They had a bullet right between the eyes, a bullet hole right between the eyes. It may have been Gustav uh, Veller, who was uh, a, a body double that Hitler sometimes used for official events and so on. Uh, but they quickly proved that it wasn't him. Uh, but that's the scenario that best-selling conspiracy books use, uh, like Grey Wolf, which was that uh, the top Nazis replaced uh, Hitler and Eva Braun with doubles right at the end. Uh, some, of the, some of the scenarios are they, they didn't tell them what was going to happen. Uh, they switched them. Hitler escaped, and then uh, the Gestapo, top Gestapo leader, Mueller, uh, just shot them. And then they burned those bodies and, uh, so that they basically killed the body doubles, and those were the bodies that were, were buried. So uh, that, that is exactly what people say, is they used a body double, and that's how Hitler was able to get away. And in terms of the urban legends and the conspiracy theories, uh, what are some of the most popular ideas for how Hitler would have even gotten out of Germ Germany, headed to South America? What what's risen to the top through the years? Well, one of the one of the major things that people say is that he he escaped by plane right at the last minute. And by gosh, th there were planes that managed to land in Berlin, literally as the as the Soviet tanks were rolling in. Uh, I think the last flight that took off. Uh, from Berlin was April 28th. Uh, the Russians tried to shoot it down, but it was flown by a, a woman pilot, an extremely uh, 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 talented uh, test pilot who managed to get away. Uh, Hitler's personal pilot, Hans uh, Bauer, had uh, supposedly had a plane standing by and was begging the Fuhrer to escape. So uh, it's absolutely true that the top Nazis were trying to get Hitler to escape by plane. Planes managed to escape from Berlin up to virtually the last second uh, before uh, the, uh, the the Russians got to the Führer bunker. So it's perfectly that's perfectly possible. 
Also, there were at least two Nazi submarines landed on the coast of Argentina uh, in July 1945. That's been documented and proven. They've got photographs of them. Um, so it's possible that Hitler could have taken a submarine and landed in Argentina. Um, uh, and that's how he got to Argentina is by submarine. And that also is the backbone of most of the conspiracy theories or things like that. See, what they basically do is take actual facts that we can prove. Uh, I say in my book kind of sarcastically, but actually not, not sarcastic. It's actually literally true. If you have a 250-page book on the conspiracy theory that Hitler got away, uh, 225 of those 250 pages are background material on Nazi gold, uh, the Nazi submarines that were able to escape after the war, um, uh, uh, the the Berlin the Berlin subway tile uh, tunnels and things like that, uh, the pilots that were able to fly in and out of Berlin, all that background material, and then only twenty five pages are spent uh, on uh, any evidence that Hitler was actually in uh, in Argentina. And when it really comes right down to it, it's down to a single page of just uh, hearsay that somebody's uncle had told somebody else that he once saw Hitler in Buenos Aires and wrote that down on a, in a memoir, but that memoir was subsequently lost, but somebody else read it and they were able to remember what the contents were. That's kind of the evidence. I'm, I'm not making that up. That's the kind of evidence you, you run into in these uh, Hitler conspiracy books. Obviously, you went into this project with uh, a bit of familiarity. It sounds like you've had an interest in this topic for a while. Uh, as you went down the rabbit hole, so to speak, and were researching, was there anything shocking or surprising that you discovered, maybe something you hadn't quite seen before? Uh, well, you know, in terms of what's in the news, I guess uh, what shocked me was how easily history can be manipulated or how how people can take um, genuine facts and by focusing only on isolated facts without their broader context or the full story and spin a tale that has not, no connection whatsoever to reality. It's kind of uh, apropos to our own time that um, it's kind of important to know the whole story and all the details. If you, t if you focus on isolated little facts, you know, that there was a plane that escaped from Berlin uh, that was able to take off as late as April 28th. There were submarines that reached Argentina in July. You take these isolated things and you can build a narrative that is utterly false, but sounds plausible. And I guess the takeaway for me, what shocked me was just how easily the media manipulates things, because there were media reports that Hitler escaped as early as uh, J June and July 1945, there, there were literally hundreds of popular magazines that had Hitler's picture on it saying that he was living peacefully in Argentina with Eva Braun and his, their daughter Ursula. Um, so this was a story that was a conspiracy tale that was fed by the media over years, over decades. And that's why as late as 2015, the History Channel was doing a series about it. So I guess it, it fed my natural skepticism. Um, and that surprised me was how much mainstream history, it's not like science. It's, it's really a detective story that's pieces together, isolated pieces of information. And you've got to get the whole story before you can make any kind of definitive pro pronouncement. And that kind of surprised me a little bit. And also surprised me, to be honest, is when everybody's talking about you know, anti-fascists and Nazi and against the Nazis, revisiting who the Nazis really were um, was pretty horrific. I, I went to all the a lot of the locations, and the real Nazis were extremely bad people, <laughs> very very evil people. And uh, so I I find it extremely offensive when people throw around terms like you know this you're a Nazi because you vote Republican or something like that. No, no, no. They're, the Nazis were a whole different class of people. And uh, they, they probably, what they ended up doing set off a chain of events that killed between 80 and 100 million people um, uh, when you count all the people dead from the war and their actual death camps and so on. So 
the Nazis belong in a class all their own. Robert, you had mentioned earlier that uh, various FBI reports were declassified after 2014. Uh, in terms of our interest here in the States, why did the FBI continue investigating reports of Hitler's survival uh, well after the war? What were they looking for? Well, you know, they were just really actually conscientious. Uh, you know, that you get reports where you can actually go online and read all these things yourself. And I did, all 780 pages of them. And what you find is 80% of it is just somebody writing in to say that they saw Adolf Hitler working at the lunch counter at Woolworths in Brooklyn, and they're sure it's him, and would you investigate? And the FBI dutifully investigates, or at least they write back and say, thank you very, very much, sir or madam, for your, for your taking the time to write to us, and, and we will we'll get on it. <laughs> and they did that to lots of reports, and only a few of them had any kind of credibility. But even those were kind of wacko. The, the, the um, History Channel starts off with its series on hunting Hitler with a report uh, that a, some, somebody met a, uh, a diplomat in Los Angeles who claimed to have been on the beach when the Nazi submarine came ashore in Argentina and helped uh, load pack animals and so on and took Hitler and Eva Braun across the Andes to a safe house in Argentina. Well, that whole story was based upon a Los Angeles time, a Los Angeles Examiner reporter who met a guy in a bar in Los Angeles who told him this story that he was an Argentine diplomat and and that the guy never saw this guy again. He never knew his name. He went back a, a dozen times in the next two weeks trying to track him down, never found him again. Uh, so he wrote to the FBI about this, that he had this encounter with someone. And on that basis alone, uh, you know, the, the History Channel kicks off its three-year reality TV series because a guy met a guy in a bar who said he saw Hitler on a beach in Argentina. You know, so that's kind of the evidence that you find in the FBI files if you want to read them. And as I said, you can go to the FBI.com or FBI.gov and with a little digging, you can find the entire file. And it's in PDF form, download it and read all of the accounts. And Robert, in terms of this book and the previous and future books in the series, how are you hoping to maybe inspire or provoke readers? Obviously, this is a fun way to connect them to history, get them to maybe look at history in a way they haven't been before. Like, how do you want to inspire them or encourage them along the journey? Uh, well, what I like to do is tell the story, uh, you know, in media rest, as they say in uh, in English class, if I remember. In other words, I try and open it up in the middle of the story and tell it in the present with people. And like what I did with my Lincoln book is I went back and forth kind of the last week uh, between Abraham Lincoln's life and John Wilkes Booth's life and how these two figures eventually intersected uh, or their two very different lives came together on that fateful night when when Lincoln was assassinated. So I try to do it in a kind of a novelistic way um, to keep people's interest, uh, because history really is interesting. And history is more interesting than fiction, really. And uh, the, the, the task of the writer is to try and bring it alive uh, kind of an exciting way and be as accurate as you possibly can. Uh, so I don't ever invent conversations or anything like that. Uh, but when we do have conversations, like in Alice in Wonderland, you need pictures and conversations uh, for it to be in a book. Uh, when we do have accounts of conversations, I like to include them and so on. Uh, and so that's, that's how this series is a little bit different, is it tries to um, keep the reader in mind and help, help, uh, help keep them interested in the topic. Uh, because I think all these topics uh, are very, very interesting, and history itself is very interesting. And uh, I'm doing my, my small part to, to keep people engaged and, and uh, exploring some of these topics. And Robert, for the listeners, the viewers who'd like to connect with you, find out more about your books, where can we connect with you on the web? Uh, well, I have roberthutchinson.com. I have a website. Uh, you can go to Amazon, and I have an author page on Amazon. That's where all my books are located. Uh, if you Google me, you'll find me. I, I write for different publications from time to time on different current event and history topics. Uh, so I'm, I'm around. <laughs> you can find me if you look for me. 
Well, like we do with every episode, we'll have detailed links in the show notes, places where you can connect with Robert and pick up your very own copy of this new book. It's time to bring this episode of The Sean Tappet Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Robert Hutchinson. Once again, our book today was What Really Happened, The Death of Hitler. And again, for more on Robert and his various books, a great place to start is his website. You can check that out over at roberthutchinson.com. And Robert, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's been a joy and an honor to have you join us for today's show. Thanks very much, Sean. 